Eight-year-old David Chubb and his older brother would walk into a toy shop. And I put the money out and she's like, you don't have enough? And then we walk out of the store and my brother's like, I got it. I pulled it out of the yeah. thing. So I was like, you don't have to pay for things? And he's like, no, you just steal. You just take whatever you want. Risk would bring him to inconceivable heights, making him one of the richest artists in the world. But it would also prove to be his greatest challenge. I grew up uh, playing a lot on the streets. We'd be like breaking into abandoned buildings and construction sites. You know, I wasn't a gangster. I didn't want to fucking gangbang. And I mean, all the graffiti guys, Slick, Hex, CBS crew, like growing up in LA, all had its impact on me. He would host his first art show at the esteemed Double Rainbow, an ice cream shop. And one day, this guy Mark calls me, and he says, "I happened to stop in Double Rainbow, and I saw your paintings, and I want to buy buy some of your paintings." Well, which one? He's like, "I'll take all of them." He leaves comes back with the Ralph's Brown shopping paper bag. He walks into my house and like pretends to trip and he drops the bag on the floor and tons of cash, hundred dollar bills fly all over my house. I'm just like, this guy's a fucking drug dealer or something, you know? Despite earning money from his art, Cho's OCD-like obsession with risk wouldn't let him stop stealing and breaking the law. Every time I go to J Japan, like I graffiti everything. I steal bikes and I, they don't lock their bikes, so I'll steal a bike and I'll just go around and I'll graffiti all of Tokyo, all of Shibuya, all of Kobe, all of Osaka. And then I'll come back and I'll put the bike back and go to sleep like nothing happened. But on one faithful night, things wouldn't go quite as planned. I go to all these stores and, I, and I'm like grabbing all the stuff that I'm about to steal. A cop saw what was happening and went over to Cho as he was escaping. I punched him and it's just his glasses exploded. Like, it just felt like a car accident, like slow motion. Another cop comes, another one, so they drag me to the police station. The jail sentence that I was looking at was most likely a minimum of two to three years. Then one day out of the blue, Cho was randomly released after serving three months in jail. My career just took off after I got out of jail. Like, work has just been nonstop. Cho was becoming quite a popular artist, but despite his art success, Cho was an adventurer at heart. Where, what haven't we done yet? We've right. been to everywhere, we've seen everything, we've done everything. I'm a, I have a heart of, a, of an explorer. I, I want to find new things, you know? When Cho was just 19 years old, he flew out to Congo in search of this fucking brontosaur-like thing in the Congo. I, I gotta fucking find this thing. He came across a German boy the same age as him on his adventure. He was being groomed to be like the next big politician in Frankfurt or something. And it's absolute chaos. I'm seeing people murdered. I'm scared for my life. I got attacked one time. I go into the jungle and we get lost immediately. And he starts to really be like humiliating towards me and right on my nerves. We had rations. I come, he ate it all, he ate it all. And we're, we're lost at this point, a week and a half maybe. I'm gonna kill this guy. I'm gonna murder him. I've been a punching bag for this guy for, for weeks now. And so he's out cold. I go outside the tent and I pick up, I pick up a huge rock, like bigger than this. I didn't kill him. I woke up the next day and I'm just looking at him like, motherfucker, you don't even know. We're walking around. Hey, what's that? Cho and the German were saved by a pygmy, one of the native tribesmen. Cho would later come back with a Vice film crew in 2012. Vice asked me, they're like, what is the show you can do like very cheaply and quickly? And I was like, hitchhiking, unscripted, and something crazy always happens, you know? So they're like, all right, go ahead and do it. And so it was me, my friend Harry, and like a cameraman and a car that follows us. So four people basically. And it's hard. Life on the road is hard. Cho would release three seasons of Thumbs Up, in which he hitchhikes, train hops, and lives life as a hobo. But hitchhiking can be quite dangerous. A guy confessed to me that he was thinking of raping me when I stayed at his house. Cho is no stranger to risk, so it's not surprising that Cho became a gambler. Yeah, my first million I made in Vegas from gambling. I gambled with everything always. You know, fortune favors the bold. Like, I would gamble my entire two month salary from Toys R Us, delivering pizzas, e anything. But even he couldn't have predicted how much his gambling was about to pay off. In the early days of Facebook, he wasn't well known when he was asked to paint murals on their office walls. Cho was told he could be paid $60,000. Instead, he said, I'm a gambler. Give me stock, which today turns out to be worth at least $200 million. Coming into large sums of money often proves to be more of a curse than a blessing, though. Just look at how the vast majority of lottery winners or trust fund babies turn out. When asked how he felt about getting all that money, he responded. How did I feel about the rest of the world knowing that, which I hated? You know, I was at home and I was in bed and I got a text message and um, 
It was a woman I hadn't spoken to in five years, and she offered me oral sex every day for the rest of my life for $2 million. It's causing you pain. I cannot buy my privacy back. Despite his success, Cho struggled with his mental health and addictions. I wake up every morning racked with anxiety and nerves, and it starts immediately. You're a piece of shit, you're no good, people really? don't like you, this and that. And so he put himself into a care program. And I got, I got sober from gambling in Hawaii. One out of four gambling addicts kills themselves. It's the reason why they don't have balconies in Vegas, because if they did, yeah. there'd be someone jumping off every day. Cho attributes his success in overcoming addictions with his friendships. I've always, uh, oh shit, I might start crying talking about it, but um, I've always, my entire life, have valued uh, um, friends over everything, right? If I didn't have that, I would be dead right now. He couldn't have done it without his friends, which made this next part all the more devastating. It's never gonna be enough. I'll never have enough women, money, success. It's, it's this, and I go, I have so many friends who've killed themselves. I have so many, fr like Bourdain asked me for help. Anthony Bourdain was a famous chef who struggled with addiction. He and Cho were very close. On the 8th of June in 2018, Bourdain was found in his hotel room after taking his own life. He's always looking out for you. He'll show up for you. Whatever you need, he'll take care of you. He's an amazing guy. Very, very interesting guy. Very but a intense. And so you can't find anyone, but I'm like, you're a fucking asshole, dude. You're an asshole. You murdered yourself. You murdered yourself. You killed someone. That person happened to be you, but you couldn't even show up for yourself. You f Just as Cho would overcome his addictions, one of his good friends would succumb to theirs. But if you can count on Cho for anything, it's to keep moving forward. David Cho has lived more lives than most of us would in 10 lifetimes. He was a notorious graffiti artist. He hitchhiked throughout the world, landed in Africa on a cargo plane, gets lost in the jungle while searching for dinosaurs, spent three months in a Japanese jail, made a bunch of documentaries on top of gambling his way to $200 million. He took the road less traveled. He is a risk taker. The world needs more wild people. The world needs more wild people. People are goddamn scared right now, David. Mm. They're scared. There's a bunch of people out there that are terrified to be free. I've been the architect of my own life and I've constructed it as so that I don't have any responsibilities. I mean, I'm a pretty fucking happy guy. I, I love my life. I mean, I, I never imagined a day when I was younger that companies and corporations and I tell people I'm an artist, but I mean, I get paid to do, to do, you know, float down the Mississippi River. I get paid to like deliver pants to people. I get paid to do, I get paid to just be myself. I really have nothing to complain about and I really love my life.